My name is Miles, aka MCML. I'm here at Nomads on A Street with none other than the father of two, Nomadic Zone, the Sound Man. This is the first installment of the High Codes Road to 200 solo series. And it's a great interview. It's introspective, you get to know my guy, and I hope you guys see the beauty in him just like I do. <laughs> we are here at a historical place, none other than Nomad. Y'all know the vibes. <laughs> Y'all know the vibes. I'm here with uh, my best friend in the world that anyone can have. Um, some may know him as James. Some may know him as Omatic. Apparently, people know him as JD. Just fucking found that out today. Whatever. Today. Um, but he's James, Omatic, Hat King, nonetheless. Who are you and why are we here, bro? Um, can I start with the why are we here before we do you the can, who are please, we? Please, why are we here? Where the, yeah, please. Um, so we're here today. Um, first and foremost, because we're on the road to our 200th episode. Um, and the ideology behind it all was um, let's get a solo interview. I believe the idea was created by you or brought to our attention from you. Um, so we're here because of that. Um, this is solo episode. And the idea was, you know, let's all pick a, a place that's sentimental to all of us on High Coast. And, you know, for the last five years, I think everybody knows this place has a special place in my heart, which is no bad. Um, so that's why we're here. Who am I? This is like your Lambo field. Yeah, like, this, is, this is home. This is home field, you know what I mean? Like. A night will happen. It can either start here, it can end here. It can be the middle ground. It can be whatever I want it to be personally. Uh, and we've all seen it. If you've been here with me, you've seen it. Uh, you know, I get, get love here. So, you know, go places where you get love at, man. It was probably the first place I've ever had a face card at. I mean, I don't, I don't know what face card value is these days. Like, should I be proud that my face card is at a, a hookah bar? I don't know. Some would say. Some would say, Some. you know, but I know that I enjoy it here. Um, so I just wanted to do my solo episode here. Who James is, I guess, you know, father, first and foremost. Father of multiple, uh, a friend. <laughs> <laughs> a friend. Um, yeah, a philanthropist. That's what, what, is I was a, what, say. What, what is a philanthropist? You just learned this yeah, word. Yeah, I didn't like, even learn the word. I just wanted to say it. Um, I don't know, man. I think I'm a, a genuine guy as the H Street chain passes by. Um, I don't know, man. I think I'm a good dude. I don't think um, there's any ill talk about me. I, just, I, don't, I don't know, you know? I'm here. Happy to be here. Glad that you made it here. Thank you. From Miami just for this. Uh, I don't know how I can repay you, but you know, you're here. I'm glad you made it. But I'm just me, man. That, happy to be alive, man. I'm happy alive too. And um, That's you're, it. you're definitely a father. You are a philanthropist. I wouldn't know. I won't say how, but you definitely <laughs> are a philanthropist. Um, and you're more than that, man. Like, Please I'll, enlighten me. As I think about you, I thought about you over the last few weeks, like, you're the most talented person I know at what they do and you're the best at person I know what they do in terms of like audio engineering sound um, your attention to detail I mean you were practically like raised into what you do um, you know you're trained by your father um, do you feel like you're a master um, you're a master at sound and can you get better and like how did you even fall in love with sound um so well, that's the first part. Do I think my master is sound? Absolutely not. Uh, personally, I currently think I suck. I'm not even going to lie to you. Why do you think you suck? I think I could be way better than what I am. Um, I just haven't really done like sound to the extremities of what I used to do. And I feel like I've lost it. But I think everything I do sounds good. Um, but I feel like in this world of engineering, like, I think everyone would say in this field that you kind of want to be a perfectionist. I feel like in anybody's field, people want to be a perfectionist of what they do. Um, I think my stuff sounds good, but I think it can sound better. I feel like every sound engineer can probably say that. And I feel like Ruben, the Pharrells of the world, shit like that. 
Um, so a master, hell no. I don't. I think anybody would tell you. Like, I don't think you would say you're a master in anything you do. Because I feel like you always think that you can get better every day. Um, so a master, hell no. Um, am I good at it? Yes. I've been doing it forever. Uh, why did I fall in love with it? Like you said, my father was doing it. Um, and it it was just like a, a backhanded passion for me. Like, you know that, for the people that didn't know, I mean, my, got, my father was a sound engineer, but he was a musician first. Um, when I'm in grade school, they came around to the classes and they're like, who wants to play an instrument? I'm like, yo, kind of been doing this instrument stuff for a while. So it was kind of like, firsthand, you know, you want to play sports and all of that. That wasn't me. It was like, I know music. It was in the back of my head. I remember being in a studio mad young. I remember my second grade talent show. Uh, they were like, what do you want to do? And I was like, I'm going to sing. Right? Imagine me singing. I've seen you sing a hell of times. Like, but um, imagine me like really singing. Like passionately singing. What the fuck were you singing? Uh, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, right? So the, the no, hold up. no, because it leads it. Into... Hold up, no, you laughed through it. He said, "I believe I can fly." We won't say who by who. Uh, hey yo, I say by who? Uh, by Sylvester. By so, Robert Sylvester Kelly. I will never forget because it was like the talent show shit, and I was like, "Yo, I'm about to do this talent show." My mother was like, you know, your dad does sound and all that. Told my dad, he was like, yo, we about to get in the studio. Like, niggas real live went to the studio and just was like, yo, you gotta sing this shit. And I'm just like, all right, bro. Like, I'm in this joint, like, singing my ass off, sitting behind a fucking uh, mixer, a board, and all this shit in the booth. I'm like, second grade. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I'm just like, I'm gonna sing this shit. Anyway, talent show tryouts come. The tryouts is jokes. I sing. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even fuck with me. <laughs> they don't even fuck me. I don't even make it past that stage. Wow. Right? Don't even make it past. It was just like, yo, what, what is all this training for? Who knows? You know what I mean? Maybe my dad just trash too. Who knows? You know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm in this Jones singing that shit. That wasn't fucking with me. But it was just like embedded in me, you know, singing this sound, man. He was an entertainer. Um, but I don't know, I mean, to like fast, extremely forward to what made it be my love was obviously, I mean, you know my story about school and shit, and I just wasn't fucking with where I was. And I was just like, let me go back to something that I know, which is entertainment, live sound type shit. Well, before we go further than that, like we was you were speaking about your father and him instilling those principles in you in terms of like um, approaching like that's like a, a one thing that I wish I learned like uh, early in life is just like being the preparedness, like regardless of you not being able to advance in that competition, the fact that he took you to a studio to show that like the mentality that you need when you approach like an important event, like you need to take the time to be ready for that, like. Um, you know, like, I want people to understand who your father was, but, like, what are some other lessons that, like, your father, like, instilled in you um, that still resonate with you today? Because though you, you, you know, you aren't able to spend time with him now, like, you, there's so many lessons that you have that you still have with, right now that, like, people that do have their dad now don't even have, like, you know, like, what, what would you say about that? Um, so the main lesson that uh, always sticks out to me and it kind of goes back to, um, well, it doesn't go back to it, but it made me think about it again. When I, uh, when you texted me actually last week, um, when my cousin passed away, um, and rest in peace to my cousin, Andre Bridges. For sure, um, rest in peace, Andre. But the same day, I mean, I was, I was going through it a little bit that day, but you said, you've been through so much shit don't let this shit get you down and do some fucking push-ups. I did the fucking push-ups, but that has nothing to do with it. But when you say you've been through so much shit, that made me think about the main, one of the main things my dad taught me when I was young was pain, right? And I joke about pain in a lot of group texts these days. We have a group chat called <coughs> Hall of Pain. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> 
<laughs> but but no, no so he taught me about pain, right? Um, I don't know what I did. I was just young. I got in trouble, did some dumb shit. And he was like, yo, come downstairs. Um, he took two big ass dictionaries. He said, hold your hands out. Put the dictionaries in your hand. Just hold them shits. And I was just hold them. You know, arms fall, because these shit's heavy. I'm a, I'm a little ass kid. Shit is mad weak. So I'm just falling and shit, and he's just like, okay, that's physical pain that you're dealing with right now. That's physical pain. And he was like, you know, there's physical pain, there's mental pain, there's emotional pain. And once he taught me that, I was just like, I mean, obviously, as, I, don't know, I don't know what age I was. I was in Weishi. So it had to be like 12, 13, 14. But he told me about the, the levels of pain. So it's just like, as you said in that text, like I've been through so much shit, so much shit, so much shit. And it's just like, you just have to compartmentalize the type of pain that it is. Like mental pain, you know, I'm thinking about some shit that's gonna happen. It's not gonna get out your head. It's just like, that's pain type shit. You gotta compartmentalize that. Physical pain, like, you know what I'm saying? It's like go to the gym, my muscles hurt, all that shit. Emotional pain is just like emotional pain type shit. And it's just like dealing with all the shit that I've dealt with and my 29 going on 30 years of life, I always reflect back on that and just like, it's pain, you know what I'm saying? Like, this shit is there. You just gotta figure out how to deal with that shit. But that was a very big lesson that I think I learned at a young age, but it didn't, didn't make sense to me at the time. Just like, It's crazy hearing you say this, because like, I remember like, being at your crib every day, like being 12, 13, we chilling, probably on LimeWire, and like, I would, first of all, you hear your dad's music when he hits the corner and pulling up, you just like blown, like this nigga about to come pick me up. But ultimately, like between 13 and like 16, like he compacted, like it's like he was new, like he was preparing you for so many fucking lessons. Like, I mean, he taught you, like, t took you to drive, like, learn how to drive backwards, like, just a bunch of like unorthodox yeah. things that crazy. ended up like. Like in retrospect, like, did it feel like he was preparing you for for something ultimately, like? Nah, I was just a kid, bro. I was just like, like you said, um, I was blown. <laughs> like, I was just like, yo, what does my dad want to do? What is he trying to do today? Like, one of the things that you, you didn't say that he was, like, he brought me into the church. He brought me back into the church. Nan had me in the church, but we was off of it. But he was like, yo, I'm going to church. I'm like, damn, my dad's going to church. And he was forcing me to go to the Bible studies every Wednesday and on Sundays, and that's what kind of also fueled the musical engineering passion as well, because it's just like, now nah, I gotta go to church, I gotta help him. He's making me go down into the pews, test out mics and shit. I'm just like, yo, I don't wanna do this shit. Like, I'm just being a rebellious preteen at this point. So I don't think at that point in my life, I was just like, yo, this is preparing me for whatever age, I was just looking at it like, yo, I'm kind of blown that I'm being forced to do something. I mean, you're a kid, you're like, this is what I'm doing as a child. Someone's interrupting this. Like, this is not the vibe right now. Like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be outside with my friends type shit on a Wednesday, you know what I mean? I'm going to Bible study at seven. We outside on a Wednesday, like, what are we doing right now? But I don't think, like, I looked at it as he's preparing me for something. And I honestly never looked at it at that. It could have been that. Could have been like, yo, he might have known something, and it was just like, yo, it's his time that I should tell my son how to be a man type of deal. And to speak to that as well, like, we always watched Boys in the Hood, right? And you always looked at Furious in Cuba. It was like, yo, when you get to this age, you're gonna live with me, I'm gonna teach you how to be a man type, type of vibe. So that would, kinda, that would kinda lean into that, but I don't know, that might have been his plight at that time. I took all the lessons. I mean, I only had 15 years of, of lessons to take. You know, I don't remember my childhood too, too much. So it's probably like five or six years of what I got from him that I can take and apply to my everyday life. But I mean, the lessons that he taught me, like the pain stuff and just how he moved, like hardworking man, like, man was always at work. 
Always, man. Didn't sleep. Going out, doing shows. Go go shit. Oh, but for people that don't know, what shows was he doing? Uh, so my father was a founding member. AMFM, EU. He did sound for Rare Essence for the latter part of his life. So the latter years of his life before he passed, he was always out just um, doing RE sound. And he was gone Thursday through Saturday, Sunday-ish. He'd get home Sunday morning, 2, 3 in the morning. He'd be dragging me to church with him at like 7. I'd be in the sound booth. I used to take selfies of me and him knocked out because he's just passed out from the night before off to three, four hours of sleep. I had his Bluetooth earpiece in, his, in my ear. It's being a bum. Being a bum. You know what I mean? Like, he's a 49, 50-year-old man. Just got the Bluetooth. He's the original Bluetooth banger. So Bluetooth I mean, banger. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> at minimum, I can say my goddamn dad is a legend. Like, his funeral, it was so many go-go legends there. I'll never forget that shit. Fucking Benny. Chuck uh, Brown was Chuck there. Chuck Brown was there before he passed. Big G was there. Ari was there, EU was there, everybody was there. So it's just like, he was well respected around here. Um, yeah, he was a guy, he was a great guy, man. He instilled a lot in me. And I just see it every day, just how I just deal with my children and shit, so. Uh, before we get into your children, I just have to ask, cause it's something I've always wanted to talk to you about, um, but just like, it just wasn't the time. Um, I was in, I think I was in the 10th grade, even 11th grade, and we were, it was class night. Um, we were, I think 2008, um, or 2009, correct me. Um, October 13, 2008. Yep, October 13, 2008, uh, we was with Class Coop. night, it was a Monday. Terry Goodwin was uh, MC. Well, yeah, you know, we uh, we had a good time. Um, we went back. Had a great time. Had a great time. Um, we went back with Coop, his mom, and uh, Talib. And I'll never forget, like, going down the hill and um, going to your crib. Because your crib was always lit. There's always multiple people there. Even people that shouldn't be at your house be there. Like, Nana was always welcoming. But I remember pulling up to your house, and um, your house was dark. Like, dark as hell. One light on. Hell. One light on. One like, light on. And, like, when you like when I seen that in my mind, I knew something wasn't right, you know, um, you know. But nonetheless, the nigga, we niggas dapped up like normal, and then like shit, like ten. I go in the crib like ten minutes later. Talib calls me and told me that your pops passed. Like, um, but what was that moment like going in the house? Like, cause, I mean, I came like five minutes later. But what was that moment like going in the house when you? Uh, so again, you know. I think at this age, right, um, stuff be filling off. Like, again, my cousin passed a week ago, but all week I feel like I was telling whomever, um, I was telling people the vibes were off. Um, I told many people the vibes were off, and I just felt like the vibes were off that day when my cousin passed. Um, but that Monday, I felt, like if I knew what I knew now, like I would know that I felt like the vibes were off. Like it just felt. What is it, like you wake up in the morning and it feel weird? Like, what, it just what felt is it? weird. Like the day my cousin passed, like I woke up, excuse me. I don't know, the air just felt different. And just like everything just doesn't, it just seems surreal uh, that day. Um, but then I found out he passed, and I was just like, okay, it, it all makes sense. Nonetheless, though, circle back to October 13, 2008. When I bring back the emotions, just going through that whole day, it just felt like, just felt like a, a overly good day. It was like too perfect. Yeah, like weirdly, it was just like a weirdly good day. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't give a fuck about a class night. I never gave a fuck about a class night. I didn't go to homecomings. I didn't go to like the first two homecomings, none of that shit. And I was in a band and we were supposed to play and I didn't even do that shit. So this year I decided to go. I had a good time. I'm like, okay, niggas, niggas going crazy. But again, like you said, 
We pull up to the jump. And the lights off, but one light. Um, and I go in the house, we had a sunroom and shit. All the lights was off in the house. And everybody was like, yo, Jay, come to the sunroom. And I'm just like, who died? That's the first thing I said. And this is what I said to my mother last week. I was like, who died? So I go to the sunroom, who died? Father passed away. And I was just like, wow. Fucking wow. Like, fucking wow. Like, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck? Um, so that shit happened. I'm balling. Um, just didn't know how to handle it. Um, it's 15, I'm 15. I'm 15. You know what I'm saying? I'm processing everything. Me over here, like, fake being mad that my dad want to be with me and shit. Uh, just thinking about the last conversation I had with him. Like, again, it was a Monday. I talked to him on Saturday. But the week prior, I didn't talk to him for a whole week. And I don't want to sit up here and say that my dad wasn't there for me or in my life or none of that shit because he was there. I was his only son and he loved the fuck out of me and I loved the shit out of him. But like, he was doing him. But I just think back to like, yo, I, I didn't talk to him for a whole week. And I talked to him on Saturday and then on Monday, he passed away. So it's just like, granted, I ain't talked to you in a week. That means I haven't seen you in over a week. So I haven't seen you in like two, three weeks. So it's just processing the fact that I'll never see you again. I can never talk to you again. I can never hear you say anything again, play this music in the car. I can't smell your cigarette burning in the fucking car when I'm trying to roll a window down when you're trying to kill me by secondhand smoke. I can't go to go-go's with you no more when I don't want to be there. It's like so much shit that is like, it should just snatched from up under you. And it's like, you never have that again. And yeah, it was just like, it was a lot. And I remember like, man, I was upstairs in my room. I was bawling, bro. And this is why I say, um, the way she guys, y'all my niggas forever, cause y'all niggas pulled the fuck up. Bro, I'm crying my fucking, my eyes out. Y'all telling me, you know, it'll be good, bro. That's the shit you gotta say, like, nigga. My whole dad just died, bro, like, and he died at three. Like three o'clock. I'm just finding out at eight. So it's just like, shit. Shit. But from that, I think that just gave me my strength at this point, man. Like, I think everything happens for a reason. You know, I think if he didn't pass, I wouldn't have took this path in my life of doing sound and shit. Because I was just like, like I said, again, I don't want to skip forward, but I was going to school for business. That wasn't my passion. I didn't grow up trying to be a businessman. I grew up playing instruments. I grew up in a studio in second grade trying to sing a fucking song that niggas failed me for. Yeah, I feel like when you were, went to FAMU and you was talking about the business school, it was more so just like the right thing to do rather than like something that you actually wanted to do, you know? Like, My father told me stay in fucking Maryland. Don't go nowhere. So the reason, one of the reasons why I was like, fuck it, I'm about to go. Like, okay, my, my, my dad passed. I was just like, my dad passed. Now I got the freedom to do whatever the fuck I want. You know what I'm saying? This nigga was like, go to UMD, go to Georgetown, stay here. My whole time, I was like, man, I'm trying to. Your dad did a stint at Howard, right? Yeah, he Like a yeah, brief stint at Howard. He didn't graduate, but he was just there. I mean, my dad did one too, and, and it was crazy. I was rapping that this nigga did. So, like, ah, me and like, you at the mall? Yeah, you know this nigga? Nah. Meanwhile, he was there for a month, but like, I ain't, I ain't a know. Is I ain't crazy. know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, a month is South nasty. Morgan State, you know, you guys accepted people that shouldn't have been there, but you know, South the ones that made it. Anyways, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, this nigga Fuji. 
Yeah, we're but nah. Anyways, man, like nah, that that day was um that that at the day I, that's the day I never forget. Um and like I always like wondered like, were you able? Do you feel like you were able to fully address you know the trauma of that situation? Uh, absolutely. You had to keep going because like you were out of school. I think for like two maybe three days, and bro, you just went back to school, and it was just like died oh, he's on Monday, back. bro. I was probably in school on like came back like Wednesday, Wednesday Thursday, or Thursday at the latest, and I was just in school like nothing happened. And they took me out of class to do the, the guidance counseling shit. Um, and that's when, like, whoever my classmates was at the time, they found out my father passed. And they was like, damn, this nigga James is back. I'll never forget, shout out to Io Ocean. He was like, damn, your father passed and you just back in, in school like nothing happened. I was just like, yeah, bro. Like, I sat at home, thought, Died on the Monday night, woke up. We had the crazy backyard. Uh, I'm just sitting in the backyard, listening to I and I. All I do is thinking about you. I had that shit on repeat. But I was just staring into the backyard. I'm just like, yo, staring back here, listen to this shit. That's not gonna bring him back. Nothing can bring him back at this point. I can't just sit here and dwell on this shit like, Life goes on, like, shout out to LB. <laughs> Life goes on. So I can't just sit here and just dwell, sit up here and be a bum. Like, granted, yes, my whole father passed. But I can't just sit here and not do shit. That's the messed up thing about life, like that life goes on. Like I had a conversation, at least I had a conversation with Charles after his um his godmother passed away and he was like one of the hardest things during that time period is like, no matter how I feel right now, like, you know, like production still goes on my company, like I still have my, my girlfriend. Care, like you, None you just of this gotta shit cares, keep bro. You gotta keep the world just keeps functioning. Like you like people, these cars driving by, like they don't even know that like you just lost somebody, like it's just it, it doesn't stop. I hate to keep talking about my cousin, but my cousin died on a Monday, the first like 70 degree day in like a very long time. It's just like, he died at like 10. Niggas, I'm on the timeline, niggas outside. Sun is shining. Like they don't care, like shit happens, shit goes on. So it's like, yo, am I gonna sit in my backyard for like a week and a half and just mourn? No. So like you had to carp compartmentalize it and move on like not move on but like go on with your life like how have you been have you, has there been a moment that you've been able to address it do you still feel like you're carrying that those same emotions like with you like because you you've accomplished so much like, since the passing of your father like you've been able to graduate you've had children you've, you've launched multiple businesses even your own business like what's um because there's other things that's happened too you know like what's What's been the thing that just kept you so driven and motivated and inspired to want more for yourself? Because you easily could just could have just gave up after that and crashed out. Um, <clears throat> I think it was just seeing the type of <clears throat> excuse me, the working man. Hold on, I'm sorry interrupting you. One more thing. Did you address these emotions in Orlando? Was Orlando the time that you actually addressed all this shit when you was living there? What do you, what do you mean by it? Because Orlando, like, you was by yourself. You was isolated. Like, um, and you spent a lot of time isolated. Like, literally, it was just you there. Sometimes the homies was there. Like, was that a time period that you actually sat down and really thought about all the shit that happened, like, prior? Uh, once I reached rock bottom down there, yeah. But if we want to get into that, we can do that too. We don't have to talk about rock bottom. <laughs> no, we like, can get there. All right. But prior to that, I mean... Um, just the, the fact of to keep going is just the fact that, like I said, man, like, he was a workaholic. My mother, a workaholic. And Nana, we all know Nana, a workaholic. Like, I was raised by people that just work, like, nonstop. It was like, this is what I know, like, work. Like, I'm... Again, to not fast forward again, but I've done like 60, 70, 80 hour weeks at a time. And it's just like, this is, this is what you do to live, to survive. So it's just like, why could, how could I stop at that point? Why would I stop? 
And I forgot the first part of the question. I'm, I hate to forget the first no, part. No, I of just question. wanted to know, like, was Orlando the time that you addressed these emotions? Oh, yeah, Orlando was, once I got to the rock bottom part of Orlando, yes, it's just like, okay, everything, like, I guess the, the C word for today is compartmentalized. We have a C word that we have over there. I'm pointing to you. We've been saying a C word. With the camera? Yeah, no. <laughs> what the, uh, fuck is, the fuck is the C word? Secret? Consistency. Like, what's word, all right, consistency, cool. Was it consistency? But yeah, uh, the C word for today is compartmentalized, but um, once the Orlando, when I got down there, that whole shit just kind of compiled everything. It was just like, okay, now I have to face everything that I've been fucking with. Like, before, we, before we get to that part. Yeah. We gotta fucking pause. We gotta pause. We went through the normal thing of just fucking around and ending up into the footage. Um, I had to really drink for this. This is like the most nervous I've been for like a on camera thing since like class night. When I did class night, bro, I had the most anxiety. That's the most anxiety I ever had in my fucking life, bro. Like, but shout out to Jason Lasley. How do you deal with anxiety? How do I do anxiety? I feel like, so me personally, right? I think. I get anxious for shit, but I think that is anxiety, because it's the, it's the root word of anxious, anxiety. Because like, last week, I, my, my fucking heart was fluttering. I'm just like, okay, I want this shit to happen. I hope it goes well. And even today, I'm just like, ah, you know what I mean? That's why I was like, I just need to get here, get this shit set up and go. But like, I think that should be fucking me up. I don't know if I want to self-diagnose myself with like anxiety. Is that crazy? No, nah, that's not crazy. To like just be, just to have anxiety. Like doing shit like this. All right, so like, I'm gonna say what anxiety is for me and then maybe I could find my truth in you and vice versa. So like for me, like I get anxiety or when I have a big event coming up, right? See, like, I feel that. So the like- Big event type shit. My solution is preparedness. So, like, if it's fashion design, and if like I got a deadline to make, like I'll find as many manufacturers as possible, look as many swatches as possible, many rates, get the best rate, have a backup plan. Boom. Some shit don't work out, hit the other person. Or if it's with uh, crypto or finance, like learn as much as I can about this company, like know where the CEO eats lunch at, where they're going to have this report, like blah blah blah. This conversation. Can you get my headphones? Get his headphones. Oh, my bad. They right here. I just need to sit. Keep talking, though. This conversation, I listened to your mixtape. Every episode, podcast episode you did, I thought about old tweets you had dating back to, like, 2010. Text message screenshots that we got with each other. Like, just prepare. But there's some conversations that you can't prepare for. Like... Check, check. Um, two, like, two, two. Has a... All right, for one, this is one thing that drives my anxiety through a fucking roof because I can't do no research for this. How do you feel when you get a text message that says, we need to talk? In my, in my present space? Or any just, space, you, any year, decade? Um, at that point, I'm thinking I did something wrong. I'm in trouble. <laughs> what did I do? Thinking about what I did last night. Last night is <laughs> <laughs> What did I do last night? <laughs> Um, did you go through my phone? Like, what? what's going on? You know what I mean? So, I think that's the way we need to talk comes from. But, like, as Charles said, we all liars, so I can lie my way out of that, hopefully. Hopefully. So, the fact that you're going to go in thinking you may lie out of it, like, you just not, you just no anxiety, like, it's like, I'm good, like. I mean, like. Ah. <sighs> I think I figured my problem out. I think it's anxiety when you know, I'm, I'm going into a situation that I can't control. Like, if I can't control the situation, like, other things I just talked about, if I'm prepared, like, I'm good. Like, Co I saw a quote that Kobe said one time, and I was like, all right, if I live by this, I'll be good. He's like, Kobe, like, yo, people be like, well, all the cowbells make you nervous. It's like, I don't give a fuck about no cowbells. I shot this shot in practice a thousand times a day. What the fuck am I nervous for? Like, just one more time. It's like opening the door. I was like, damn, so, if I'm that prepared? Yeah. yeah. So I feel like, I'm not saying I'm that prepared, but I feel like if I walk into, oh, uh, we need to talk, then I feel like I can spin it like I've been in this situation of the we need to talk before. 
personally, me. I feel like I've been in a we need to talk situation before that I can probably maneuver my way out of it, me personally. So if I get a we need to talk, I'd be like, oh, okay, um, for what? Let's figure out why we need to talk. And then, you know, it could be a big letdown. It could be like, oh, yeah, um, these drapes, as Chris Rock once said. <laughs> Let's talk about these drapes. Then you're like, all right, now you're up on 10, and the drapes come, and now you're like, all right, but yeah, them drapes look all right. It wasn't that bad. Yeah, 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 I mean, so it's just like, I don't even, if a we need to talk comes, it's just like, what the fuck do we need to talk about? Especially if you ain't doing no wrong. If I didn't do no wrong, what are we talking about? You're kind of seasoned, though. Like you, I'm very seasoned. You're very seasoned. Like you dealt, you dealt with so I've, much. I've been through so much. You've been dealt with so much nonsense and like or de- uh, uh, bad news being delivered to you that it's like the shit that most. Not proud of it. I mean, it is what it is. Though it's life. <laughs> like we always is life, bro. Like the shit that you've dealt with throughout your life, like. It's, it's happened so many times and it become frequently and it may be come down a lot at the same time that like the little things that normal people complain about, do you feel that way? Like you have friends that complain to you about their problems and you hear them like, Yo, oh my God, this happened. And you be like, bro, like, do you know what I'm dealing with? Cause like, as your, as your bro, like, there hasn't been often I can say that you really just complained. Like you don't really, yes, you'd be annoying. Like my problem with dealing with you is just like, Damn, this nigga James fucking lit. We gotta fucking get this nigga up. Like, so you're like you just got too drunk. Like that, then not, I'd be mad about that. But like, I can't say that like I'll be around you and like you're just a bad vibe. Like I can never say in any era, like through all these things we're talking about, that you've ever been a bad vibe. And I truly appreciate you for that. Even though I give you a lot because like I get mad about you maybe being too lit sometimes, just because like I want the best for you and like. You're really fucking talented, man. Like, you're really good at what you do. And, like, I, I tweeted this before. Like, I think you're like our Quincy Jones. Like, our Quincy Jones was able to affect the Fresh Prince and Off the Wall and Star Wars and be a part of so many productions. I think you have that ability and the skill set to apply yourself to different situations and improve all of us, whether it be KD, whether it be Brit, whether it be through me with MCML and challenging me, whether it be through Hazy Thoughts. Um, all of us, like, you have that skill set to go into any situation and see the problems and solve it. And, like, I just want you to be able to find that own beauty within yourself and, like, just solve those internal problems. But, like, bro, like, you're, you're really good at, it, at these situations, man. Like, I'm, I'm glad you appreciate that because I don't think uh, the masses understand what I can do. Is that true? Oh, but but before you say the masses understanding, is that the masses' fault for not taking the time to understand you, or is that your fault for not actually putting it to the forefront what you actually provide? Because some things that you actually do, people don't know that you do. It could be a little bit of both, right? It could be a little bit of both, um, but it could also be um, the people who have dealt with me won't tell the others that this is what he can do and this is how he is, right? So, again, uh, back to sound engineering, right? There's the greatest sound engineers in the world. They're super assholes, super assholes. The greatest video producers, the greatest um, designers of the world, the greatest actors of the world, um, they're, they're assholes. But you wouldn't know that they're assholes. But if you did, you might get a warning like, yo, this guy's an asshole. He might not work with this or X, Y, and Z type shit. And I'm not saying that I'm out here like I have a criteria of what I need to work with or type shit like that, but I feel like I can do X, Y, and Z, but you just got to deal with me at this point. You got to deal with me like I have a good vision for everything that's going on, but you just have to deal with my personality. And I feel like my personality isn't that bad. I don't think it is, personally. If it is, let me know. I mean... Let me know if it's real bad. You know, I know how I come off. I'm kind of introvert in a sense. But again, I, I warm up if I know you, if I'm fucking with you type shit. So, I mean, it, I think it's all situational at that point, man. Like, I know what I can do. I know what I'm good at. And I appreciate you for saying that, you know, I'm good at certain things. Uh, the Quincy Jones things might be a little reach. No, it's not a reach. 
I've been here for before all this shit. Before there was a, a podcast, before there was any music production, like, like I was, I seen the beginning of this. So no, I don't think it's a reach at all. I think that's why like you have a hard opinion on music and you don't like, I do. uh, like as you call trap music, coon falsettos, because you have an ear for sound and the composition and uh, you can read music. So you know how production should be, how transition should be. So like, I don't think, I don't think anything is beyond you. It's just whether, uh, it's just whether rather you want to actually engage in these things. I feel but, like I answered your question wrong. Yeah. All right. Well. Can you repurpose the question? Don't even repurpose it. Just say it again. I feel like I answered your question. I mean, wrong. it wasn't really a question. I was just saying that I think that you're that I understand. I understand you. And I think you're a super talented and and and, and, the turn, and like you've been able to challenge a lot of people in the different aspects of life okay. and different businesses. Yeah. Um. And you represent like how Quincy Jones okay. was in like the early '90s and the '80s. Like he was involved in yes. multiple business ventures, and people don't understand where you get off. Like, so like now, from your perspective. So now I think I can answer that right. I think. I think people would be asking me, why does my opinion matter at yeah. that point? Like, why do what I have to say about what you have going on matters? Who am I? I think that's what it is at that point. Because how you said it, right? You know that, you know that I'm talented. You know what I'm saying? Cameron might know I'm talented. Latani might know I'm talented. Everybody in our inner circle might know that I'm talented, but the <laughs> outside people might not know that. Right? So, that's the last part. Do you think you display that? Like, do you think that you actually convey? I'm not out here asking to, I'm not out here asking like, yo, okay, I know that I do this. I know I'm this good. Give me my residuals or my whatever. You know what I'm saying? I'm not out here be like, yo, I know that I can do X, Y, Z better than you because I know I can. But I'm not gonna be out here on front street like, yo, I know I can do this better than X, Y, and Z. Like, I seen you play fucking, the, like, I remember we used to listen to music and like, you would get on the bass guitar and strum the guitar off of sounds. Like, not reading the music, but it's off of the sound. That's not normal. Everybody can't do shit like that. Get on a keyboard and do the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Or actual grand piano or a drum set, like, so I just wish that like people, like other people were able to see that beauty in you besides like, you like, you like the fucking hookah or you like sneakers or like Omatic likes the fucking Omatic's Washington football drum. team. Omatic's Omatic's drum. Drum. Like, I just wish that you would display those things more. I mean, I could, but I'm just being discretionary these days. Why? I don't know. I just wanna keep everything to myself these days. Well, you say these days, right? But like, as you always also always say that life is short. Very. How would you want people to remember you then? If you don't, if these days, if you aren't displaying these things of uh, the epitome of who you are, like. That's a good question. It's a great question. Um, and I think about this question often because as to Charles, is what Charles always says, he doesn't want to make a podcast morbid. But um, he loves that word. He, he loves that word, does. Charles. Definitely love the word morbid. But to not make the podcast morbid, I always think about if I die tomorrow, right? How would anybody remember me? Like, my if I die tomorrow, my funeral is next week. Who's gonna show up to my funeral? You know what I'm saying? Who, what are they gonna say at the pew? Like, James was... The Creative Half Set Wednesdays. Creative Half Set Wednesdays, um, Creative Emoji Mondays, the power driver behind High Goes Podcast, the influencer on the Hazy Thoughts, the guy that wore these shoes, the guy that was the Hat King. Um, Father too. The guy that was just out here, always wanted to have a good time. Um, the guy was always drunk. Do I want to have that as my mantra as well? That's kind of crazy, right? It's kind of crazy. But it's just like, what do I want that to be? So that's something I always think about. And I honestly don't know. I really don't. I really don't. 
I think you would rather the people say it for you than you, but it is it takes you to represent that for the people to like give you those flowers. So like, here's the thing, right? So not to cut you off, but that's all I have to say. Yeah. But shout out to Chris because he always says not to cut you off. And then he cut you off. But not to cut you <laughs> off. You gotta shout out to Chris. Shout out to Chris. But not to cut you off, right? I feel like damn, I forgot what my not to cut you off point was. Not to cut you off, I think this shit is mad morbid, but it's just like, damn, I really forgot my point of what the not to cut you off was. That's all right. Well, regardless, yeah. regardless, bro, like, I want you to, to display these things. Like, how I think of you as Quincy Jones, I want people to see that in, in you. Like, I have a tweet that, like, man, it's like in, like, it was in, like, 20, I was in, I think it was in college, and I came back and visited you one time, like, 2013 to 2012. I don't fucking remember, but in I was Orlando? like, it was, like your, it was your birthday. You came to my crib, like, out Elk Ridge, like, we, we pop shit, we pop Clico, like you turn like 19 to 20 some shit, but I was like, yo. Oh, it was a famous picture? Yeah, and I was like, yo, shout out to I was Maddie. smoking your fucking, um, the, the, um, the wax pen. This wax nigga pen, was like, early. Nah, you, you can't smoke that in this. <laughs> um, I was like, yo, shout out to, uh, shout out to a Maddox Zone for helping me find the beauty within me. Um, because like, I was listening to like, Ozzy Brothers and like, off the wall, like, young like when he was kids like 12 years old and like he was the first friend I had that listened to that and it made me feel confident like I felt weird like it's old people music but like you made me feel like it was cool to be different and just like other shit because your mind was somewhere else too can I say that I'm an influencer amongst our friends yeah I really feel like I'm an influencer on like our friends me personally I feel like I bring certain slang not even me I think the shit that me, you, Tlaib, the way she guys did, we influenced that slang into the ism guys. Stat that. Stat that for sure. But I just feel like I be saying shit like shit killing me. All this shit that I be saying. Stat that. Days, I feel like it just becomes a thing. And shout out to Tlaib Bab because he coined jokes. Yes. He, he coined jokes. And everybody says jokes. That's jokes. Tlaib did that first. But he also told me that California. So we can shout out Tlaib and California. Shout out to Corbin. Yeah, Corbin for giving us jokes. But that's the importance of it, though. The fact that you felt that it was important to, to, to shout out Tlaib, like, that's why, like, you have to, you have to, um, you have to be able to. be here without Tlaib. And, and, but, but in real time, though, you have to give people, give people who James really is because they won't get these things without these type of interviews. Like, we talked about how, like, the lessons that your father instilled in you, whether it be driving, whether it be auto engineering, whether it be the preparedness. What do you, as a, now you're a father too, you have a daughter, you have a son, um, and I'm lucky to be a godfather of, like, what lessons do you want to install in them? You know, the things that you didn't get to learn and things that you feel are important to them now. Um, uh, very tricky question. Um, and it's only tricky because I have a son and a daughter, right? So there's there's always a, a mantra of, I'm always thinking about at this point, like when my son gets to a certain age, he's gonna be like, yo, I'm over here dating shorty. I want you to get the kills, da 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 da. But at the same token, my daughter is. Well, look, focus on, let's focus on Jaina now, because I, I have another, like, a segment of women that I wanted to get into okay. that involves L. Focus so on let's J9. talk right now. So, J9, right, that's my guy. He's my twin. Um, I love you. Yeah. I love you too, J9. You're going to see this. And I'm very self-conscious of everything I'm saying today, because I know this is on the internet forever. That's so cool that, like, one day, like, like they'll see all of this. So like, I'm, saying, I'm looking at AMFM videos of my dad just doing this shit and like, He had no idea, though. To his defense, he had no idea. <laughs> at all. The spin move, though, in that video? <laughs> yeah. Yo, one thing I want to say, shout out to my homegirl. This had nothing to do with any of this. My homegirl had a OnlyFans, and the, the, link, the link is down now because she's pregnant, so... <laughs> <laughs> But no, no. So, right. um, go ahead. The day nine. 
The J9 and shit. You'll see that too. I mean, it's life, bro. Only the J9 conversation and just kids and my kids in general was a very convoluted question because it's just like I'm just living this this fatherhood shit as I go. Like he's two, going on three. Um, and I kind of want to just teach him everything I know, right? So, like, people tell me all the time, this sh- you would tell me I'm wilding, the shit that I think, the shit that I say, I might be wilding. I think Cameron would say the same shit. Let me ask you something, because everybody in this room has had a moment. I think moment. everybody would tell me that I'm wild. Let, let me ask you this, though. Everybody in this room has probably had a moment in their life when they told you that you were wild. Yeah. Do you actually, because from my perspective, you'd be like, well, you, you'll say whatever. Um, but it feels like you actually internalize these things on your own. Like something happens, you'd be like, oh, I am wild. Like, do you actually listen to when people tell you shit, or it's just like? I think I always take it in, and I'll revisit it. Like, okay, yes. You told me I was wilding on Tuesday. I actually manifested and did what I said I was going to do on that Tuesday, on that Saturday. And, yeah, okay, this thing of miles is right. I've been in a lot of situations where I was with her, and she was like, yeah, nigga, I told you so. Don't do that. So it's just like, I just got to accept it, right? I got to accept it. But with the kids, I'm just like, I think it's a free for all for me to be like, yo, okay, I don't care what you have to say. I might be wild. I don't care what you have to say. I don't care about what you have to say. I don't care what anybody has to say. You know what I'm saying? Like, you might not agree with what I say to you. You might not agree with what I say to you. And you might not agree with what I say to you. But this is who I am, and this is the way I'm going to raise my child or children. So at that point, it's like, yo. The same way my dad told me about pain, I'm gonna teach my same children, this is pain. Uh, speaking of that, as you learn lessons to be a father, do you want J9 to be like you? Yes, why the fuck not? He's got my name. Why shouldn't he be like me? I feel like I'm 100% my dad. I look like him. I am him. This nigga was in the go-go's. I feel like I smoke tobacco because I know this nigga smoked tobacco. This hookah is tobacco. Uh, J9, you don't got to smoke hookah. I you mean, don't I, have I, I, to. Like, I you don't have to. Out there. You don't got to smoke hookah, bro. You don't bro. have to. I'll beat your ass when I find out you do this. If it's not past 18, I'm going to fuck you up. <laughs> you got to relax. No. <laughs> fuck you up, you got to relax. I'm going to fuck you up, J9. But nah, for real. Like, yo. I want him to be just like, he is just, he's just like me now. Yo. You've been gone. You haven't seen him for a while. But like, Katie sees him often. What I appreciate though about J9 is even though I haven't seen J9 in months, so when I'm on FaceTime, he still Bro, fucking acknowledges me. He's a great like he guy. He knows who the fuck I am. He's and a great I really guy. appreciate that, he's man. He's a great like, guy. He's a fucking great guy. He is. I love my. I said I had to say, we're back here with Omatic, my brother, James, JD, apparently. We're on 8th Street, we're at Nomads, and um, boom. All right, so boom. I'm about to read a screenshot from something that you may or may not say. I want you to answer um, where your mind was during this time period, truthfully, mm-hmm. or you can omit, or where you, where you was during this time period, and do you still feel this way? I feel like you know what I'm about to read, but um, cool. This is your words. And one person responded to you. I can say that person's name, but it's not gonna mess nothing up. You said, I'm pro situation shit. Charles says, that's interesting. <laughs> you said, I'm pro, let me be a whore while you, parentheses, whomever you, my yous are, fully committed to me. I am selfish. I am controlling. I am possessive. I do not commit. 
No, nah, that's the that's fire sign. Fire sign. Fire sign. Fire sign. <laughs> Do you still feel these sentiments? And during the time period, why? What made you get this off that day? Because if, to my recollection, you didn't have to get that off, but you got it off. Like, and like during certain life events, I go back to that screenshot. I'm like, yo. <laughs> so talk to me, man. Why well, gotta talk to you? <laughs> because we never talked about it. Like, so what was the first bar? Pro situation ship. Pro situation ship. I feel like I am. Why? There's nothing wrong with that too. Like that's something I think I think more people should discuss because there's so many issues with uh, monogamy and like people's commitments to situations. And if more people were honest, because I've come to realize is that like, because I never really had nobody talk to me about like like how to handle relationships with women or like how to love someone or like how do you engage in love with someone and some people you may deal with you may not actually love them like you may just like the situation like for you like you saying that you're a pro situation like what does that actually mean to you i think pro situationship just means that i'm very happy to have some fun with you at the time at the time that's all it is like we're having fun we clicked up at this time. Oh, I met you this night. You know what I'm saying? Let's, oh, we clicked up. Let's, let's do something tomorrow. If we're not doing something tomorrow, okay, we might do something next week. We, we just vibing next week. You know what I'm saying? We don't have to put a title on anything. We're just vibing at that point. And then we might just vibe for like the next two to three months. It's a vibe at that point. And at that point, it's a situation ship. Like, I feel like things happen fast in relationships and I don't like that shit. It's just like, all right, I've been trapping it out with you for like two, three months. Does that mean we're in a relationship? I don't think it should mean that. Like it's like, we've been having fun for a while. Should I have to cut everybody off for you after two months? I don't know. But when I sent that text, it was me in a younger age. So it was nothing that they had to deal with at this point. At this point, it's like, yo, I got kids at this point. So now it's just like, okay, we going out doing something. You realize that I have children, plural, at home. So we can't have this fun too often, but we can have it when I have time to have it type shit. What about the part of you being selfish, controlled, and possessive? Because uh, that, that doesn't really change because you, you have kids. Like, that's just an emotion that you have. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, that, I, that, 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 does that stem from you being the only child or like? It's a crazy question, but it's a good question. Um, yeah, I think, um, It's a nasty bag. It's a nasty bag. It's a nasty bag for me to say that I kind of want my way. And by the way, I'm only a child too, and there's nothing wrong with that. My like my way of being like justifying that like this is like just being better than the next person. Like again, like the preparation shit I talked about, like just showing up more prepared than the next person in front of me to, so that I can live by this creed. It's not right, it's toxic, but like, you know what I mean? Like, we need, we need something to fuel us at Everything the end of the day. Everything is mad toxic. Everything is mad toxic, but it's just like, this is kind of my way and my living of doing this. It's all bad though. It's literally all bad. So, yeah. But it's not always bad, right? Because like, and just in terms of like, you know, your relationship with women and also spirituality too, like you get into this transition of life where like you've been in your sister girl bag, um, you've been using AIDS, you've been using eucalyptus, you've been burning more candles. Like you've been like trying to like find more spirituality in your life, like indirectly, whether it be through the music or all these other like nuances that I'm mentioning, like yeah. what really influenced that? Because like, You've been raised by women. You have a deep connection with women. You you clearly have the utmost respect for women. Like, um, I think where did this, that come from? Um, I think that just comes from more like just self care. Like, I don't even think it has to deal with like dealing with the woman. 
per se, right? Like, nigga, you take care of yourself as well. And that was prior to the woman. I don't think it has to deal with... I took care of myself because I'm raised by a woman, though. So Under, it's like... Understood, understood. It's a good point. But I guess it was influenced by a random, like... Yeah. Man. So for me, right, I can definitely attribute some of this to my best friend who's sitting over here. But also, it's Candle just like... Candle master. Yeah. Candle Frankfurt's master. Also, it's just things. like, I'm going to a new age. I kind of want to just treat myself and my body better. So it's just like, let me go ahead. I've always been burning candles. That's nothing crazy. I've always been burning incense, but like oils for my body. The, 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 the candle bag definitely, let, let's like, let's be clear. The candle bag got better like over the years. Like, I'm yeah, saying, but it, it, it wasn't but, like. But I, I, you always listen to great music. Yeah. You ain't always been burning like yeah. eucalyptus like lavender. Com- so again, like I didn't have eucalyptus in my house. You know right, what I'm saying? I didn't let's, have, let's, I didn't let's get have. Some respect. I didn't. <laughs> he got this, he got eucalyptus in the shower. Like he got the plants coming. I got it everywhere. I got we, it in everybody's room. He gave me the link. I get the link. Yeah. And they sold out. Like, but it's all it's all good. I got it now. Shout out to Trader Joe's. So, I like all that shit. You know what I'm saying? You gotta get your body right. Gotta get your mind right. And I think it's all just a transformation, man. Like you just can't be the nigga just in your crib. Like I'm just. Waking up, taking a shower, going to work. Like, no, nigga, you need to wake up, lather yourself and whatever you need to lather yourself in body utter body butters, body oils. You got body butters? Yeah. I remember when this nigga wasn't wearing lotion. Like, I don't, he, I, like this nigga that's my thing. Was not I, don't even, I lotion, still don't bro. do the lotion. I used to be like, yo, there's like you people wear lotion. Like, that's what I'm saying. Bag? He was like, like, I'm wearing lotion. I was like, bro, I don't need lotion. I'm light skin. I don't need to do that shit. That's fucking crazy. And Incredible. I still don't do that shit, bro. So I just put on the oils and I put oil on yowls. the butter. Oh, yeah. Do a plug right now. Whoa, whoa, who who butter um, you putting on? Like, let's, let's, let's. Um, I mean, the 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 oils and the shit I use is from uh, Bath and Body Works. Their um, eucalyptus, um, all that shit. But shout out to Black Wax Bar. I got their um, body butters too. Shout out to Kayla, man. Let's shout out to Kayla. Um, yeah, I got your body butter. Shit smells amazing. It just doesn't intertwine with what I got. Already. I use the turmeric and vitamin C face scrub. Um, I do egg mask you too. You see his face. It looks good. Thank you. You never told me that, man. I appreciate that. So, anyways, um, speaking of these things, like I'm glad that you've got into self care, and you've become a model man. So, like, you have a daughter. Um, you're still learning, like the father, her part is raising the daughter. But do you have an idea of like, just from your experience of women, like when she gets to that age, like what type of man you want to like? Pursue your daughter. Like, does those things come to your mind at all? Yeah, I just, I just don't know. I really don't. I feel like my karma's gonna hit me. You speak about your karma so much. Like, why do you think that? Like, you don't get no forgiveness comes with this life. I was trash. I was very trash. Very trash. I feel like I'm a good guy, but I've done some trash things. So, I feel like my daughter might sadly Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before you you talk, do you believe in the power of words? The power of the tongue. I think when we talk, when we say things, we manifest them. So before you say something right now, do you think that like you have the power right now to speak positivity into the future? I don't know. I really don't. All right, well then get your shit off then. So here's the thing, right? I feel like, let's say, Fuji and J7 were sitting here right now. They could probably say the same shit, like, I don't want my son to do X, Y, and Z. I don't want my son to do X, Y, and Z. But you're gonna live your own life. So I got my kids, right? I got got J9, I got L. They're gonna both do their own life. I can only raise them to a certain extent. I can can bring them up and be like, yo, this is good, this is bad, this is right, this is wrong. You know what I'm saying? When we grew up, someone told us this is the right thing to do. 
But you're going to go against the grain because... We ultimately have a choice. That's what I'm saying. Got you. And a choice is just... All right, I get you. Get your shit off. So A choice... My favorite bar from one of the Matrix movies is a choice is just something propositioned by someone with power. Like that's, that, see this, this is the, the, the part of you that you need to share more. Like this dude likes The Matrix, seen all the movies and studied all of them multiple times. But people wouldn't know that because we had nomads. So people don't like The Matrix. They don't understand people what like the, the Matrix. Matrix. They don't, they like The, Matrix, like the Matrix because Matrix? it's an action movie. You like The Matrix? <laughs> because right, it's right. an action movie. People like this as an action half. movie. They don't understand the, <laughs> the deep bars that they're saying inside of the Matrix. What's something that you got from the Matrix? The Matrix told me that, like again, like I said, uh, choice. One of the things that they said in there was choice, right? Um, His choice was to drink instead of saying what he had to say. So here, here's the thing about the Matrix, right? The end of the second episode, they go to the key maker, and the key maker is holded by this other nigga. And he's just like, yes, I have the key maker. But the reason you can get the key makers, you have to be like, yo, what is the choice that you want? But the buddy was telling this nigga, is like, yo, your choice is already made for you. You have to figure out what choice you want. And to me, that goes down to the like, point of like, there's a plan and there's God's plan. So God's plan is like, yo, you're going to do this regardless. If you take this route, you go this way. If you take this route, you go that way. So the route that Neo took was like, okay, I'm gonna take this route and I'm gonna go to the key maker and he's gonna do all this shit and we'll be set free. That's all the shit that gets debunked in like the, the last one they just made. But it's just like, yo, all this shit happens in the matrix because it's like, yo, Maybe we're plugged in, maybe we're not type shit. That's how I look at the Matrix personally for me. So look, this is a great way for us to transition like for your own personal Matrix. Because like personally, for this is for me, I wrote a five year plan in 2015, like after I graduated college, of like how I saw what life was gonna become. And like I look back at this plan like last year, even though it was six years later, everything that I manifested Literally everything from income. What was to, on that shit? Um, the 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 pillars of that was just like my relationship. It was um, my location where I wanted to live at. It was my income. It was where my friends are. Like literally, the only thing that didn't come true was that me and you were in L.A. That was, I mean, and that was probably, at that time period when I wrote that, that was the most important part. They're like, yo, me and James in LA, that's some shit we always talked about. Like, For after sure. we, we lived in Florida, For like. For sure, LA we, was we, definitely we, the next place to go. We was in LA, um, you know, but everything else came true. Like, so, I'm talking about my next question, like, do you think about that, like. LA? Yeah, because like there's two things that like that struck to me. There's just regrets for you personally. Like, is Pittsburgh? You always say like you wish you would have went to Pittsburgh, but you get. I want you to talk to the camera about that, and then LA. Like, 100% to Pittsburgh. Um, so if we want to talk about Pittsburgh, um, this this takes it back to when I was at Full Sail, and again we didn't we didn't we didn't touch on Orlando. We did not touch we wanna, on we, Orlando. We have to do this again, like, cause Katie has to yeah. do his again. So yeah. like. We but, didn't touch on Orlando, but in my latter days in Orlando, um, I was just like selling so much in my class, and it was just like it's uh, almost um, cool. He's going to at least. Oh, uh, with the full sale uh, in Orlando, it's not what it is today. So kids, don't go there and thinking that it is what it is today. Only because LB doesn't go there. That's the only reason why. It's a crazy shot. That's not a shot. What the fuck? Bro, you was Crazy. there with LB. This thing's Marcus doing great. Marcus Pringle was there. He's doing great right now. You said Orlando is not what it is today, right? Yeah. So if I'm saying somebody that's not there anymore is the reason why it's not, it's not great. That's okay, not a shot. Okay, I see. I see what you're about. It caught me off guard. Anyway, so I was there. I had a, um, a teacher that told me I was really excelling in my class. That's refreshing. Yeah, it was um, pretty much um, doing live event 
audio and video for whatever, live entertainment, sports entertainment and shit. And he was like, yo, we got this great program for you. You just got to go to Pittsburgh for 18 months. And at the time, I was dealing with whatever that we didn't speak on that I had to deal with. And I was like, bro, I cannot go to, I can't go to Pittsburgh for 18 months. I can't do it. Like, at that time in my life, I was like, yo, I have to leave. I have to leave Orlando. I cannot do this shit. I cannot. But I hate to have regrets in life. I only have a few regrets in life. What are your regrets? And I want to hear about your goals after that this. That really was my... That shit was my really... The biggest regret to my day. To today. To today. Me not going to Pittsburgh was my biggest regret of my life. At 29, that was my biggest regret. Not going to Pittsburgh and pursuing that career to get on that truck. And I would have been doing fucking all these video, all these games. Like, I would have been... Oh, niggas at um, Cap One, I'm in the truck. Like, I'm getting paid like six figures to just do audio, video in the trucks type shit. So now, I do this shit on the side, and I just get paid to like run cables and shit from these niggas. Here's what I found. Granted, it's a good check, but like a good salary, I could have been living good off that shit. Living good. You know, Granted, right where I'm at now, I'm fine. I'm super fine. You are but I would have been fine. way better if I would have been like, all right, let me go to Pittsburgh for 18 months. But at that point in my life, again, like I was dealing with so much shit. I was like, yo, I can't go to Pittsburgh right now. Speaking of dealing with so much shit and like being fine, let's just talk about happiness. Um, I've never, besides our childhood, like when we were just like, just kids, just listening to music, figuring it out. The only time I've seen you happy like legitimate, like happy was like the first time we visited FAMU's campus. Um, and after J9 was born, like what is happiness to you? When did you find happiness? And are you happy right now in the state of life? You hitting the shit out of this hookah. Like, I um, <laughs> just want to let y'all know. If y'all don't hear this, I hear it. And he hitting the fuck out of this. But what is happiness to me right yeah. now? Um, shit. So, hold on. Let me, let me just say this. Somebody just texted me, probably don't have the bread. I don't know why I had to point that out. But go ahead, bro. I don't know how I point that out. But go ahead, man. Like, <laughs> What's happiness? Happiness to me in these days, honestly, is just being around people that I fuck with and that I love personally. So granted, right, I got my two kids. I love being around J9. We really haven't gotten to L, but I love being around L. I love that shit, right? Besides that, nigga, I'm super happy that you're here right now. I'm super happy. My guy, I haven't seen you in a long time, bro. We miss phone conversations. You call me when I'm at work. I can't pick up because I'm at work. I call you back, you don't pick up, you know what I'm saying? like. We can do that. We can do that. I'm sorry, bro. I'm not going to lie. You're the only person that I call. I don't give a fuck what you're doing. I'm like, yo, I got to call Jay now. Nigga, you call me at 12. I'm like, bro, like, right, I'm, yeah, yeah. In the, I'm in the weeds of, like, work. But I call you back. Like, nigga. And I hate to bring it up again. My cousin died, bro. And I called you, like, right after that. I was like, bro, I was happy to talk to you. I'm happy to talk to Katie. I got Sprint, nigga. I'm sorry, nigga. It, it, sometimes it don't even be me, bro. Like, I, like I, it don't even be me, bro. Like, I just don't give a shit. Like, I'm sorry, nigga. Like, I'm sorry, nigga. Like, for real, bro. Bro, I'm talk to you. 
me and Katie been talking a lot lately because being lately, I'm that happy to talk to KD. Bro. Shout out to KD. KD's been really been pivotal through this whole process because it's been random times we've been like places and like we isolated through all the madness and these two end up talking and like these conversations that they have are really fucking like <laughs> me and see how to eye yeah they see how to eye bro like it, it's like certain people you just get alignment with like and it's not it doesn't even take years it just takes it just had that that some, sometimes chemistry just happens to the person so um, like I just want to acknowledge that I just want to say like I'm happy to talk to you I'm happy to talk to him me and my sister go out a lot happy to talk to her all the time she keeps me home because I be wilding the fuck out. She be like, uh, yeah, no. But it's just like, yo, like, I just like, I think I'm happiest when I can talk to somebody that someone can understand what I got to talk to about. Do you feel like I've been going through a lot of shit. Do you feel like it was time when people can understand? Yeah, I feel like I can talk to you. So here's the thing, right? And I'm glad you brought that up. I feel like it's times where I can don't want to talk to you because I don't think you'll understand what I have to say. I can talk to KD because I don't think he'll understand what I have to say to you. I feel like I can talk to both of y'all and she won't understand what I need to talk to you. I feel like I can convey a message to all of y'all that only one of y'all can understand what I want to say. Let me ask you a question. Is it that we don't understand or our response is not what you want to hear at the moment? I think that's... I think that makes it a, a, a point, right? So I might want to hear what you have to say about what I have going on. I might want to hear what he has to say about what I got going on. And I might want to hear what she has to say about what's going on. But I also feel like I'm going to talk to both of all three of y'all. And y'all can tell me what I want to hear. So I'm glad that all of y'all are here right now so we can talk about this shit. Well, look, man, as your friend, I want to say I apologize for not being able but not, but listen, but not being able to be the, the area that you needed at the time, you know, because I can be heavily opinionated and it's only because I want the best for you. And some I'm not shit. Even, so to not cut you off, no. I don't think it's a heavy opinionated thing. I feel like you got shit going on in your life. It's sometimes that you don't have nothing to give to me because you're going through whatever you're going through in your life. Bro, whenever I know you're going through some shit that you don't have nothing to give with me. And same for her. And I know for me, right? Because, nigga, people want to talk to me. Well, speaking for all of us, because we're all three of us are really passionate about our one thing. Outside of that shit, like, whatever you got going on, we're here. Because I've talked to all of them about, like, just specifically you about, like, wanting the best for you. We all want the best for you. I know. We not at work. I appreciate y'all for like, that. Nigga, I told you I got sprint, bro. Like some of this shit ain't me, nigga. It's them, bro. Like shout out to T-Mobile. Y'all niggas is coming. I got the SIM card now. Look, bro. Nigga, we here, bro. <laughs> we're here. Like we're here, bro. Like I'm I, again. There has, but outside of what you're saying, there has been times that like I have asked my understanding. Yeah, you do. You have your own but, life, bro. No, no, no. It's not about my you life. Have your own life, bro. And I have I'm not, not about, mad at you, though, bro. I'm not mad at you. I literally got this vision of James in my head because I know what you're capable of, bro. I've been here for the inception of a lot of this shit. Like, I just want to see this shit happen, bro. Like because I be around other people that do the same shit that you do, they just don't have it, bro. Like, they, they, they drive, just don't. Bro. Like, the drive, the talent, the will, the want, bro. Like, you, ha you have all these things inside of you. Like, I just literally just want you to be able to um, display your beauty to the world. Like, everybody should be able to see what I see in you. So, like, when you hear me angry, or just saying things, and just, just me just being frustrated and disappointed that People don't get to see the beauty within you. That is all. So for those other times and shit that you didn't want to hear, I apologize as a friend, bro. Like seriously. Are oh, you good, bro? That's all. I want to say that. I know who to. I know who to take my discretions to. I know. I heard. I heard. But look. But, but look. As we wrap this thing up, because obviously, like we've recorded a lot, and there's things that we have to discuss at another time period, or maybe they may discuss these things because I don't know everything, but. Um, what does the future look like? Like five, 10, 15 years from now? I know recently you've been talking a lot of being 40 years old. You've been talking to married people. You do a married podcast now. Matter of fact, plug the married podcast real quick before we. 
Shout out to Love and Life Podcast. They want to get on our shit, too. We're going to have all the married men come on our jump. Shout out to Love and Life. It's on that. Uh, <laughs> Katie knew all the names. <laughs> shit. <laughs> I can't even name names, man. He's your good man. But, nah, I can't. They was wild man. out. But shout out to Love and Life Podcast, man. Yeah, L Boogie, L Boogie, all Boogie. them, all Y'all them. Y'all talk about boys some lessons, and then he shares them with me. Bro, I was just like, God damn, do I need to get married? Like, what the fuck? All right, so look, <laughs> well, as we wrap this up, like, what what is the future for James? What is the future for Omatic Zone? Like, there's so much more to you, like, and as a father too. Like, what do you? How do you imagine the future for yourself? Like, ten years from now, fifteen, you look back, like, what are some thing? What are some milestones that you want to see to feel like you can look back and be like? I did what I needed to do. Um, let me get this situated. Mm-hmm. So as far as the, um, as me or? You, just you. Collective? No, no, this is you right now. Um, the collective afterwards. Personally, I just want this entity to get paid. Personally, I want this shit to get paid for monthly salary. I don't care what anybody else had to say. We can't be talking for free. We can't be doing this shit for free. No, we can't be doing this shit for free. Um, Koi. Fuck it. We can't be doing this shit for free, um, but for for all of us, man, we we going on a 200 episode. Um, tickets are out now. Go ahead, buy an Eventbrite. It's in the description of this podcast. Um, come out to the 200 episode, and yeah, just come vibe with us. But um, after that, like, we can't be doing this for free, man. If you want to sponsor us, do whatever. Shout out to Fort Life. They right here. They didn't sponsor the episode, but they here. Um, yeah, man. Well crafted tequila. So um, personal goals like as a father, fatherhood. <sighs> personal goals as a father. Um, so I want J9 to embody me as a man. And I kind of want L to do the same thing. But I don't want her to be out here like wilding. But I don't want Jay not to be out here wilding as well. So I don't know. You know what I mean? They my kids. Do you I, think, all right, but because right, you said wilding, but I like, people, most people will look at wilding and just, just take it as face value. But like, I think that like wilding, there's lessons to learn with wilding and just like going through life like kind of radical and just finding your way within like the beauty within the madness. Like, the, um, like, is that what you mean by wilding? Like, just trying to, like, figure it out, do it your own way? Yeah, so I feel like it can be a little bit of that and a little bit of I told you that this was going to happen. So it's just, like, this is the wilding life that could happen, but, like, this is what's going to happen when you go out and do X, Y, and Z. And this is what I'm going to tell my kids, like, yo. Because, again, like, I've been taking it back, like, yo, like... My kids are going to see me on this camera right now. So J9 and L, like, this is me. I don't want you to defer from what I'm doing here, but I want you to do it the right way. Right now, we're doing it the right way. So I don't want them to be like, yo, I did X, Y, and Z after the after fact. Like, nigga. That's beautiful, man. Here we are. You know what I mean? Cool. Don't do nothing crazy. Do you have any career goals left that you want to accomplish? Uh, Yeah, I kind of want to quit my job that I'm doing right now. Yeah, yeah, you know I'm fucking with that. Yeah. You know I'm fucking with that. Kind of want to quit my job and um, do this full time. So we're going to see how it happens. You will do that and it will work out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to speak shit in uh, manifestations. I've been buying candles for my house. I bought like 30 candles for my house. I'm not gonna light them until I get into my house. It's a manifestation thing. But this is the same type of thing. It's the same type of thing. So. All right, 
I keep getting off tangent, but, but, but who's talking about candles? I got to ask, bro. Summer Walker. Um, but we can edit this out. But what is it with you and Summer Walker? She what, ghetto. All right, what do you she like ghetto. about Summer Walker? She and ghetto. you like Summer Walkers. Like, she what is it about the Summer she Walker ghetto. shit? She ghetto and her this shit. This is going to end up making it, but like. She ghetto. I love a ghetto gym. Anyways, all right, look. So we talked about, we, we was getting into like your spirituality and like your love for the sister girls. I even saw your rant about uh, you watching Insecure, which I thought that was your return to Twitter. That was fucking hilarious. If you want to chime on that, it's cool. But like, yeah. like, what is your thing with just like Summer Walker and the sister girls? Like, what made you tap in? Like, what is it about them? Like, I feel like it brings some form of enlightenment for you. Um, or if it doesn't, like, what, what, what does all this mean to you? Um, <laughs> I don't know what the sister girls bring to me. Um, Are you a sister girl? I, 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 <laughs> I think at this point I probably am. Like, I burn sage, I light candles. I'm not summoning spirits. I think that's like, Supreme sister girl at that point. You got sage in your house. Yeah, you got I got crystals. sage in my house. Got I got cr- incense in my you house. You got crystals. I got crystals in my house, but I'm not like rubbing crystal to be like, oh, this is what it is. Well, you might tap the crystal, like. Yeah, I man, might do. I, I might do it, but that don't I mean. I tap one fall out the house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. But yeah, that's not the that's not the vibe that I'm giving off. You know what I mean? What about Summer specifically? What, what, what is it about Summer Walker? Because I said it because like growing up, growing up with you, like we've encountered Summer Walkers, and like I don't think you've shown that Did same. We? At Flowers, there's some Summer Walkers that went to Flowers. Come on, bro. I don't want to say names, nigga. Like help me, help me, nigga. My thing about Summer right is like she's the perfect mix of like ghetto. But not ghetto. But ghetto at the same time. Where's the not? Yeah. That's the, <laughs> that's the question, right? So it's like, where's the not ghetto? And I might chalk that up into her being a mother. A mother. <laughs> I might chalk that up to her being a mom at this point. But I love Summer Walker, bro. I don't care what she does. She has no wrong in my in my vocabulary. I love Summer. I don't care what so she does. So not even the alkaline diet for an infant was... I mean, like, people got to do what they want for their own baby, bro. Like, it's if that's what you want to do for... scientifically proven that that's not... I have no idea what the science does to that in their what baby. What about the haircut with the dreadlocks? The braid, shaved head thing? I mean, that was what she wanted to do. The fourth baby mama landed on the track. I'm the fourth baby mama. You're not giving me nothing. Ooh. Let's move on. We covered a lot of things throughout the day. I guess it's a selfish question, like, uh, how do you view me as a friend? How do I view you as a friend? Um... Oh, wow. Um, I think you're you're one of, if not my best friend in this life, guy. Like, I've been said that you are the godfather to my son. Um, Obviously, the life factor hasn't been here for you to see my second child. I feel like I'm, I'm Elle's godfather, too. Man. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you see this. Uh, yeah. But you, you know what I'm saying? Like, you've, you haven't been here for that. And prior to two weeks ago, the other guys have been there for that. But, nigga, I deem both of y'all, like, the godparents of my child. Like, there's nobody else who's gonna be the godparents of my children. So, I don't care how long we don't talk. 
none of that shit. Like, nigga, <laughs> you the godparent to my children, J9, L. So is Talib, J9, L. You're my guy. And if you wasn't my guy, you wouldn't have made it here today to fake interview me today. Like, what are we talking about? Nah, for real. I just want to let you know, and L know, whenever L sees the interview, like, regardless if I'm, like, not there in the moment, because, I mean, like, this is just a small, this is big for you, but in her life, this is a small segment of her life. The impact that I'm going to have on J9's life and L's life is going to be, like, incredible. Like, I know the the meaning of having a godfather, having an extra support figure, or having that male leadership in their life, like, I'm gonna play a pivotal fucking role. Like, I just have to, this is, this is a phase in life I have to just handle, and challenges I have to personally deal with, but I promise you, I'm gonna have a meaningful impact on both of their lives for a lifetime, and they'll always have me, I'll always be there. No matter what fucking happens to you, I'll all they'll always know that I'll be there for them. Like, and that's why like getting on FaceTime and like you talking to me and even Jay not hearing my voice, he gets the phone. Like shit like that like means everything. Um so I'll always be there for them. And like you haven't even seen um how much they mean to me, but we have nothing but time, bro. And they're always on my heart. And I love them, I love you, I love Nana, I love your mother, like, thank you. Thank you for being there for me, times I needed you, through anything uh, I dealt with. We in with. this together, guys. Thank you, bro. Um, and on that note, um, we can wrap this up. Um, hope you guys have learned beyond behind the boards. We could call this episode. Um, there's so much complexities to this man. Um, there's things that we haven't touched that we'll touch another time. Maybe KD will touch on it um, the next time. Um, but I just wanted you guys to. I wanted you guys to be able to experience the beauty in James that I've been able to experience as I've known him um, throughout our friendship, our brotherhood, and I just, just parts and pieces of him that I want the world to see that they haven't seen yet. And I hope that watch this interview, you've been able to get that. Um, any closing remarks you would like to say? Um, my closing remarks is High Coast 200 is uh, available right now. May 14th, come out, buy your tickets. Get them now, you can get them now for a cheap price. You can get them next week, price gonna increase. You get them the last week, the price gonna increase. Just get your tickets right now. High code, 200th. We're gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna have a lot of giveaways. We're gonna have a lot of friends there. Come out, man. Um, High code, 200, May 14th. And my closing remarks, um, I want to give a special shout out to Koi um, and the whole staff at Nomads. Um, shout out to Koi, shout out to For Life, shout out to my guy Omar over here. Um, this appreciation for them to giving us the opportunity to be here. Absolutely. Um, everybody to help with throughout this process. Shout out to Ricardo Deshaun, mm -hmm. great brand. He's also challenged me, and I have not forget about your challenge. Um, and also, um, I guess I can introduce myself. My name is Miles. I'm also a philanthropist. I'm a CEO. I'm an executive of multiple companies. You're a philanthropist. Yeah, in my own way. Uh, but I'm a CEO, ultimately. Um, I'm a leader of men. And that's all. Um, thank you to High Codes, Hazy Thoughts. This was a great interview. Thank you to Kenneth and Natanya for being here. God bless everybody. And I hope you find the beauty within him and in yourself too. And if you haven't already, please explore that. Good night.